Hey, Dr. Scott Stevens here. In my last video, I was talking to you about histograms, how to make them, how to read them. Today, we're going to talk about a topic that conveys exactly the same information as a histogram, but does it in a little different way, what's called a frequency polygon. Remember how histograms worked. We had a bunch of boxes all sitting beside one another. For example, the tallest box here you see has values listed between 40 and 60. That means that it represents all observations whose values are at least 40, but less than 60. Each category includes its lower limit, but stops just short of its upper limit. You can see from the height of the box that we're being told that there are 35 observations between 40 and 60. We could also report the relative frequency, the fraction of all observations that lie inside that range. But today I'm going to show this same information using not a histogram, but a different kind of picture, one called a frequency polygon. Here it is here for the same data. And you can see that it does echo the same feel of a histogram. In fact, if you compare the two, you'll see that there's a strong relationship between them. And that's what this video is about today the relationship between the two, how to read a frequency polygon, and how you can change a frequency polygon into a histogram or change it back. If you want to make a histogram, the easiest way is to use the template that I created that you can find on the website on Canvas. It's called Frequency Distribution Histogram and Box Plot, and it's pretty easy to use. You take your raw data and you plug it over here in the first column, and it automatically creates your histogram for you. Well, almost. You can see it doesn't look that great because I've told it to make categories of width 300. And you can see up here that my range runs only from the numbers 4 to the numbers 99. So I might prefer to, for example, start at 0 and take categories at width of 20. That's a more reasonable histogram. And that was the picture that basically we saw a moment ago on the previous screen. If you want to do the histogram by yourself, of course, you can use the techniques that I indicated in the last histogram video. Okay, so we've got a histogram. How do we turn it into a frequency polygon? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is to indicate the lower and upper limits of each one of the boxes, like that 40 and 60 on the central box, but also include the midpoint of each of those boxes. Halfway between 40 and 60 is, of course, 50, just like halfway between 0 and 20 is 10. I'm going to include one more at the end of the entire list, too, below the bottom at negative 10, and one more above the top at positive 10, 110. Okay, because every gap is the same size, a gap of size 10 in this particular case. The next step is quite simple. I'm simply going to indicate the midpoint of each of those boxes with a dot on the top of the box. The two endpoints, of course, are going to be way outside those boxes, and so they'll get a dot right down at zero. The last step, well, you guessed it, just connect the dots. And what you've got there is the frequency distribution for this data. Now, I think the easiest way to think about the resulting picture, the red line, is to always imagine that you're seeing those green boxes there at the same time. In particular, what I want you to notice is the very peak of our red line, up there at 50, does not mean that there are 35 observations that equal 50. It means that there are 35 observations that would fall in the box somewhere between 40 and 60. You've got to remember that the midpoints of the line are what are indicated by the dots. They represent an entire range, but they're only showing you one value, the value of the midpoint. So let's see what that means in practice. Here is the frequency polygon that we'd have for our current set of data. This might be all that you see in a picture. In fact, you might see less than that. The chances are they're going to show you that there's a 30 where that dot is, and there's a 50 where the highest dot is, but they won't tell you about the point that's right in the middle. And that's the first step that you want to think about when interpreting a frequency polygon. You have to realize that halfway between 30 and 50 is 40, and that's going to be the lowest point in the range represented by the highest dot in your picture. What I want you to do is to draw vertical lines up over each of those midpoints like this. You can probably guess what comes next. Now that I have each of those dots, I'm going to draw a horizontal bar through them. Basically, I'm building the top of each of the bars of my histogram. The horizontal bar that you draw will go right through the dot and will stop at those vertical lines you drew a moment ago. I don't need to draw horizontal bars through the endpoints that are already at the zero axis, since the bars that they would create would then have zero height. To finish things off, well, it's all over with the shouting. Just put the rest of those vertical bars in to make your horizontal lines into boxes, and then shade them. 
and voila, there you go. If I were you, any time that I had to deal with a frequency polygon, I would create this equivalent histogram in my head to get the cutoff points right. It's just too tempting to think that one dot represents one number. It's easier to remember that one rectangle represents a range of numbers, and that's what's always going on, whether you're talking about a histogram or a frequency polygon.